discover solutions to issues that affect your family and professional life with practical information to help you get past life's adversities. Take a proactive approach to power up your life with Rosalie's expert resources. Floridians continue to work hard to regain financial security after the worst economic downturn in decades. We learned how important it is to make intelligent financial decisions. And joining us this morning with the findings of the 2012 National Financial Capability Study at the Global Center for Financial Literacy is Jerry Walsh, president of FINRA Investor Education Foundation. Jerry, explain the purpose of FINRA. FINRA is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, and we're a non-governmental regulator of the securities industry. What that means is that anyone that sells a stock, bond, or mutual fund in the United States has to be registered with us. Why was the study created? The National Financial Capability Study is a broad survey of more than 25,000 U.S. adults. And we examined financial knowledge and behavior along a couple of key pillars planning ahead, managing finances, making ends meet, and financial knowledge. Share some of the findings of the study. The findings paint a mixed picture for how Americans are faring when it comes to managing their money. And there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is that most Americans appear to be feeling more in control of their finances. They're better able now, compared with three years ago, to pay their monthly bills on time without feeling stress. But we see areas where Americans are falling behind, and one particular area is having rainy day funds set aside to weather financial storms. Any encouraging signs from this study? There are encouraging signs. Americans feel more confident about their finances, and almost half of Americans are engaging in good credit card behaviors as far as, it, as, far as paying off uh, their monthly balance on time and in full. There's still room for improvement, and we need to make strides to improve financial capability. What can we do to improve our financial capability? 42% of Americans, regardless of what their income is, feels like they've got too much debt. So reining in high interest debt, whether that is credit card use or use of payday loans, that's one of the best investments that you can make in yourself is to pay down high interest debt so that you can get on the road to saving. Where can our viewers find more information about Floridians and their spending habits? A great deal of information, all the data points that we've been discussing are available on usfinancialcapability.org. And there you can take the quiz and see how you stack up against your state and the nation when it comes to financial literacy. Thank you, Jerry, for joining us this morning with this eye-opening financial study. Thank you. We all need to research and evaluate before spending on high-ticket items like a new car. This way we can conserve and be safe on the road. From better ways to connect and communicate to more energy-efficient travel, innovative and eco-friendly solutions are expected to increase the impact on how Americans drive. High-tech expert Scott Steinberg joins us to reveal the latest vehicle technology trends. Good morning, Scott. Hey, Rose. How you doing? So, Scott, how does technology continue to impact consumer buying habits? Well, we're seeing technology becoming a bigger part of the buying decision when it comes to automobiles, especially for everyday shoppers. In fact, they're looking for innovations, for example, that allow them to get better fuel economy, better connect with all their favorite wireless devices, and enjoy an overall safer driving experience. So if you look at things like uh, Ford's got the Escape and the Explore, really tons of new technologies in there for everything from voice-activated, hands-free calling. You can control your music that way. And they have these great driver assist technologies. So literally, you know, you can tell if you're drifting out of your lane, you can find out if somebody's in your blind spot, or even if you want to parallel park, especially if you're bad at it like me, it can actually automatically help you do that without ever touching the wheel. And today, with all of our vets coming back with multiple disabilities, the hands-free options add to their safety while they're driving. 
That's right. That's right. I, and, you know, the other thing that's interesting that we're finding, too, is, is especially in Florida, for example, I, technologies like the hands-free lift gate that you can find on the Explorer, it's literally you can wave your foot underneath the bumper I, and it'll pop open and unlock that lift gate. So if you got your hands full of groceries, you can put them in. You know, these are becoming more popular. Certainly, you guys are, are being more green full, uh, and mindful, right? This is great. So all these safety features, drivers in Florida are definitely taking them into account. Uh, and they're really thinking about their impact on the environment. Environment, you know, when it comes to things like uh, buying cars, they're, they're definitely looking for uh, options like the EcoBoost engine, right? So really, you can improve your fuel efficiency because prices at the pump still pretty high, uh, but at the same time, cut your emissions. And of course, you know, the blind spot warning systems, the lane assist systems, and one of the cool features, you know, you can definitely, if you're fighting for space at the mall, uh, you can detect if somebody. They use radar to detect if somebody's behind you if you're trying to pull out. Sounds a warning. Uh, so definitely, drivers are embracing this throughout Florida. It's great to see. What are some surprising results this data uncovered? Well, one of the biggest surprises, if you look at major metropolitan areas, things like Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Chicago, these are actually among some of the most eco-friendly cities out there. You wouldn't think it at first, but there's actually been major pushes in most of these cities to become among the greenest in the nation. And so they're definitely thinking about their impact on the environment. There's also some interesting surprises. If you were to look at some of the most mindful cities, at Seattle tops the list there. You would think it would be one of the geekiest, and it is, but they're actually because of the road conditions, because of the rain. They're definitely thinking about uh, protecting drivers, how they can prevent accidents. And in the case of them, they even have technologies uh, like inflatable rear, rear seat belts that you can find in the Explorer uh, that definitely protect children or other folks who might be sitting back there elderly in the case of an impact. So really across the nation, though, we're seeing people are becoming more connected. They're becoming more mindful. They definitely want to be safer on the roads. They want to be able to prevent collisions up front, not just have the technology uh, to deal with it if it should happen. And of of course, they're also more and more thinking about the impact that they're having on the environment and trying to be earth friendly. So people really are looking for more technology in their vehicles. They definitely know that people are looking for greater fuel economy. Uh, and on top of it, they know they don't want to sacrifice power, but still want to be eco friendly. So buyers across the board are looking for more tech. They are looking to be safer. Uh, but we're also definitely finding that, that really that fuel economy, that efficiency, that's a big piece of it as well going forward. Where can consumers go to educate themselves on the variety of new technology that are available in new cars? I highly recommend researching online. There's many sites where you can go to Edmunds.com, right? For example, you can check out the latest and greatest news on vehicles. You can go to Ford.com, find out about all the technologies, view videos. And that's one of the things you need to take into account when you are comparing. I mean, you can certainly read magazines, consumer reports. Find out more about what it is you're buying. Think about it. There's tons of tips online. And also take a look, compare the technology features that are available to you, right? Because sometimes you'll be able to interact with your favorite apps. I mean, Sync makes it possible to read text messages allowed to you or control certain music apps with your voice, for example. So definitely see what's available in the range of vehicles you're shopping for and really think about some of these pieces as you go and be mindful uh, and you know, plenty of great options to choose from. Did I hear you say hands-free texting? <laughs> That's right. Well, because it's voice activated technology, right? It's speech technology. So if you want to get turn by turn directions, find points of interest, uh, or control the radio, control your music, if you're using something like Sync with My Ford Touch, the, the nice part about it is literally you can keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, because it is speech technology. And future advances there, I mean, they're not just going to be able to read you tech me text messages, but they'll also be able to read entire articles to you, right? So you can keep your eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, and really be overall safer. Thanks, Scott, for joining us with all this new auto technology information. My pleasure. Thanks, Rose. Are you taking advantage of your vacation days? A 2012 survey found that over 226 million vacation days go without being used in the U.S. annually. With the economy, many are still struggling and say they just don't have the money to get away. Travel expert Kendra Thornton joins us live with a few simple steps to make that all-needed vacation happen this summer. Kendra, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. I see the picturesque bridge of lions in your background, and you're in celebration mode. 
Well, I am very fortunate to be in the beautiful St. Augustine, Florida today. And it is actually as part of the celebration of the 500th anniversary of the discovery of Florida. And you will notice behind me is an exact replica of a 16th century Spanish sailing vessel that was actually constructed in Spain and brought over here to commemorate the 500th anniversary. And uh, there's a lot of special events happening here this year and especially this summer as a result of the anniversary. And of course, those who know St. Augustine, and for those who don't, it has really everything you would want from a beach vacation staple, the sand, the sun, um, a beautiful little historic town to shop around. And uh, also it gives you miles and miles of unobstructed beaches where you can even find fossilized shark's teeth that are millions of years old. So there's a lot of fun activities in this beautiful destination and it's very accessible uh, by car. I really know that a lot of families have found that airfares are just too expensive this year and we're going to see a little bit more people driving this summer to their vacation and St. Augustine is one of those very easily accessible destinations that really can be a great vacation for the whole family. Even if you feel you can't afford to get away, studies show that it's healthier for you to take a couple of days off and get that short getaway, then not. Absolutely, vacations can be uh, very recharging. I mean, there's been a lot of studies that have found, have found that people are actually more productive at work after they've had a vacation. And um, again, you know, people don't have to think about necessarily getting on an airplane to take a trip. I mean, driving, drive to destinations are very, very easy and access accessible. Um, here's a tip too when you're driving, use the YP Local Search and Gas Price app. It's a mobile app and it's great because it really lets you get insider local information on destinations either that you're going to or driving through in terms of restaurants, businesses, special events that are happening. So it really can be a handy resource to have when, when you're driving to your vacation. For families taking road trips, what can we do to break up that long ride? I know people may be traveling with small kids and of course you want to pack a lot of snacks and keep them distracted with movies and technology but also there's a study that found 85 percent of Americans wish they spent more time outside so the uh, National Audubon Society has teamed up with Toyota on a really exciting program called Exit the Highway that is really encouraging families to drive the scenic route this summer to their destination. It has an interactive nature map where people can get information on, you know, nearby parks and local wildlife uh, during their drives. So really, that's a, a fun way to sort of make your drive an adventure versus just trying to race to your destination. How can we get around the escalating cost of air travel? One idea is to maybe consider sharing a vacation with another family. Perhaps you rent a house together and then you can split the associated costs. Um, and then again, uh, maybe if you're flying, try to look at um, uh, air flights with layovers. I mean, sometimes people tend to shy away from those, but really they can be uh, less expensive, of course, and airports across the country have really beefed up their uh, in, in airport restaurant experiences, the shopping, so it can be a fun way to stretch your legs and stock up on some snacks and, and uh, maybe a couple gifts that you may need for wherever you're heading. Where can we find more summer travel tips? People can go to moretipsforyou.com. Thanks, Kendra, for sharing our Florida history to enjoy this summer. Thanks for having me. Find more exciting events in St. Augustine for their 500th anniversary at vivaflorida.org. Melanoma is responsible for about 75% of all skin cancer. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Jefferson County, Florida has the seventh highest rate of melanoma diagnosis in the state and 135% above the national average. St. Johns County had the highest melanoma death rate in the state that was 96% higher than the national average. Just in time for fun in the sun, Brian Barron, co-author of Don't Go to the Cosmetic Counter Without Me, joins us with some summer beauty tips for guys and gals to stay safe in the Florida sun. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Here in Florida, do we need sun protection in the winter as well as the summer for both men and women? For both men and for women, daily sunscreen is essential. Think of it like brushing your teeth. You wouldn't go a day without brushing your teeth. Don't start your morning without putting sunscreen on. I've got some great options that are lightweight for both the face and the body. So let's go through those real quick. Um, two of them are from the drugstore. 
This is from Olay. It's their DNA superstructure cream with SPF 30. SPF 30 is the new normal in terms of sun protection. It used to be SPF 15 was the one that dermatologists were saying to use. Now it's SPF 30 or a little bit above SPF 45. This one from Rock also has SPF 30. It's their multi-correction four zone daily moisturizer. Both this and the Olay have a great mix of anti-aging ingredients. So you're getting your sunscreen and anti-aging ingredients. But the ones that I'm most excited about, particularly for sensitive skin, are these from Paula's Choice. This one is the Skin Balancing Ultra Sheer Daily Defense with SPF 30. This would be a great one for guys because guys typically don't like the feeling of anything on their face. And this sunscreen feels like nothing. It is literally water light. It's amazing. And then for sensitive skin or for somebody who has rosacea or finds that sunscreens tend to sting when they apply, Paula's Choice Hydrolite Shine Free Daily Mineral Complex SPF 30 is, is just excellent. And again, it feels super lightweight. So you're gonna get that really important sun protection, the antioxidants, without, feel, without the product feeling heavy or greasy. Why is summertime a good time to check out your cosmetic products? Summertime is a good time to take stock <clears throat> of what you have from, from winter, from spring. Uh, you wanna check all of your moisturizers for any texture changes, odor changes. I always say if it looks gunky or smells funky or the texture has gotten kinda chunky, that's a very good sign that you need to just toss it out in the trash. The number one thing to check though, especially if you're not a regular sunscreen user, is the expiration date on sunscreens from last season. Most, for example, like a tube of sunscreen, you're gonna find it on the back, right along the, the top part here is typically where you'll see an expiration date imprinted. So how can we buy expensive creams for day and night when we're on a budget? The only difference between a day cream and a night cream is that your day product should have sun protection and your night product doesn't need that. But one of the ways, the easiest ways, I think, I'm a little partial, but for women and men to figure all of this out is to go to cosmeticscop.com. You can consult all of our reviews there. You mentioned don't go to the cosmetics counter without me, which is our book, but you'll find those reviews and a ton more information, including all kinds of articles about how to take the best care of your skin online. Thanks, Brian, for sharing your tips on how to keep our skin healthy in the Florida sun. Thank you, Rose, appreciate it. Guys, are you stuck in a rut? Well, a new study says now is the time to break free. Because most men regret not pursuing certain things in their lives. And they feel the need for more direction or sense of purpose. And feel restricted from all their life responsibilities. With 53% feeling bored with their daily lives. Clean Break reality TV stars Hal Hardy and Luke Rogers join us this morning to help men get out of their comfort zones. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Rose. Tell us about this new men's study that identified spontaneous, adventurous, and impulsive men to be happier. Chic Hydro did the, the study, and uh, we just really fall into the demographic of it where you know, 59% of the guys that are, are in our age group feel like they're stuck in a rut. And uh, they found us to go on these journeys. Luke went to Hawaii, I gotta go to New Zealand, and just basically break away from our everyday lives for a little bit to experience something new and find a little bit about of ourselves in, in the meantime. Time out can help men ignite a better mental attitude. You know, people, people who say they're adventurous on a regular basis or actually take steps out of their, their comfort zone, 76% um, of those people find they're more successful and 72% find they're more happy. Yeah. You more happy, Hal? I am happy. Uh, yeah. Are you? Yeah, definitely. If a man's career still leaves him feeling unfulfilled, how can he feel more satisfied? I would say for myself, it's, I kind of fell into like what society wanted me to do. Um, and finding the easy way to make money because I mean of course we all have to make money and support ourselves and so I went to college and was good at numbers and got into accounting and uh, you know accounting is not the most exciting thing in the world but I was okay with it and I could make money so we kind of all just figure out what's the easiest path so we can survive um, and that doesn't necessarily equate to being happy. 53% of men feel bored with their lives. What is the root of this problem? I think it's about taking risks, Rose. I really do feel like that 
a lot of a lot of the things we do it really is to sort of put ourselves in a place where we feel maybe secure and, and then not security is a bad thing but I think sometimes we insulate ourselves from from taking risks I think sometimes it's the risk taking that allows us to really push ourselves past places we you know we thought we could go for one and then I also think that like it, it is a risk to kind of pursue and do something that you love there there is a uh, yeah, absolutely. you know there's an adventure, I think, in, in sort of stepping out of the box. You know, I, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from, from testing yourself, you know, sort of in the, in the physical world um, that you can, you can carry over into your career and in your day-to-day -day life. It's easy to get stuck in a rut. Um, yes. But I, th and I think it takes some courage, uh, you know, and a little bit of adventure, adventure, adventurous nature to kind of get out there and, and try something different. And, and you know what? I, I think more often than not, you're going to be more satisfied by taking a risk um, and trying, then, then if, you, if you hadn't, maybe you'd regret that you hadn't right. more than, than actually trying. Most men can't take off to exotic places like you guys do. They've got wives and responsibilities for kids and mortgage payments and car payments and health payments and, oh my goodness, and they don't have any free time. I think it's just finding anything you can do spontaneously in your life. Like if maybe it's not going to New Zealand, but taking the weekend and saying, you know, I'm gonna go on this camping trip that I've been talking about or just doing something on that Friday to, to break away and go experience something new or taking a cooking class or doing something that is outside of your everyday behaviors just to really kind of push yourself to do something and uh, you know continuously learn about yourself. So what's the conclusion that's drawn from this study? I think watching what Hal and I get to you know have done on, on the show is, is, is a good, you know, a good visual of, of, you know, and something very practical of stepping out, you know, and, and it's not, like you said, it's not super practical for everybody to go on a trip to New Zealand yeah. or, or to Hawaii, but I, I think it, it does translate well, and, and for us, for me, at least, it was about taking risks, and, and you know, when I got back from, from, uh, from clean break, you know, some of the things that I, you know, I learned was, just, I'm going to take some risks, I'm going to step out, and I, you know, I started a company um, and I've been running that for the last year. That's kind of kind of doing what I want to, you know, the things that I want to do and kind of following following my dreams. Um, but like you said, it, it isn't about career. I really feel like everyone wants to live a great story. Right. A and living a great story it is about experiences. And, and like I was saying, like it doesn't necessarily have to be career stuff, but maybe maybe it is just like setting new goals for yourself. Maybe it's a yeah. triathlon, or maybe yeah. it's a 5K, or maybe it's um, you know something like the Tough Mudder. Maybe you're just yeah. putting a ch putting yourself up against a challenge. Maybe you thought you couldn't do. Um, you know, and, and then finding out what you have inside you. And yeah. I think that's a lot of what I learned is that I had more inside me than, than I thought, you know, and I was able to do more than I thought. And that was Absolutely. able to translate to my career. Um, but also, you know, that, that's something you can translate into, you know, multiple areas and arenas of your life. Thanks, Hal and Luke, for inspiring our male viewers to step up to the plate and get out of their comfort zone. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Rose. Free summer barbecues, picnics, and outdoor events can be fun, but not for six million Americans who are at risk for anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction that happens quickly and may cause death. From a bee sting to shrimp on the barbecue or just a party balloon, it may lead to a life-threatening emergency. In fact, an emergency room visit caused by food-related anaphylaxis occurs every 18 minutes in the U.S. Robin Miller, cookbook guru and host of Food Network's Quick Fix Meals, knows firsthand what it's like to live and entertain with severe allergic reactions. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Rose. That was, that's a lot of information and it's, it's scary information, isn't it? and it's all life important information. You bet, and you know what, you wanna hear one more stat I'll add to yours? That two thirds of those six million Americans with life threatening food allergies don't carry an epinephrine auto injector as recommended. So they should be, and they maybe wouldn't have all those emergency room visits um, you know, every 18 minutes. So it's important for people to be prepared, especially when you're out. It's cookout time of year and everybody's outside with food all over, you know, you really, if you have a severe food allergy, you need to be prepared. So Robin, when did you learn that you had a severe food allergy and how does it impact your daily life? I started to develop a food allergy as most people do. They have a mild reactions until there's repeated exposure. So by the time I was eight or nine years old, we kind of figured it out that it was eggs. So as time progresses, it tends to, and it can get worse, but there's also, uh, you know, adult onset allergies. So 
the, the, you know, that's why I'm so excited to be working with Sanofi because, you know, I worked with my health care provider and I came up with a plan. So there's three things that I always encourage people to do, whether they have a mild to severe allergic reaction to food, because you never know, is talk to your health care provider and find out a, a treatment plan, come up with a treatment plan for yourself, avoid your allergen. That's what I always try to do. When I'm cooking, I stay away from eggs. When I'm out, I make sure that um, I ask if there's eggs in anything. I try to avoid things with eggs. If it's somebody with a peanut allergy, they would do the same, or a wheat allergy, they do the same. But then, you know, there's always those accidental exposures, which could be landing people in those emergency rooms. So when that happens, I make sure, and then I always carry my AviQ, which is the first and only epinephrine auto injector with audio and visual cues. So it literally walks you through and talks you through the epinephrine injection process. So from injecting into the outer thigh, it counts you down how long you need to have it there. Then the needle retracts, you pop it in your bag where it fits because it's small, and then you head off you know, for the follow-up care to uh, you know, get medical attention afterwards. But it's really important that you have that action plan in case accidents happen, which unfortunately they can. What are the most common food allergies? Well, the, the eight common food allergies, peanuts, tree nuts, wheat, dairy, fish, shellfish, soy, and my favorite, eggs. <laughs> so, you know, it's really hard to create recipes without those eight common food allergens, and that's what, I, that's what you see in front of me. Um, these delicious recipes have none of those eight common food allergens. But, you know, it may just be somebody's allergic to shellfish, and that's fine. They think they're avoiding the shellfish at the picnic, right, because they're not going to have the, the shrimp. But if the shrimp was put on the platter, and then now the tongs that put the shrimp there aren't over there with the vegetables, then there's cross-contamination. So you may have one food allergy, and you think, I'm going to avoid that but there is also the, the risk of cross-contamination. So that's why it's really important that you have this kind of plan, to, this preparedness, um, when you're not in control of the food that you are around. Share some allergy-friendly tips for entertaining this summer. This, it doesn't even look like, you would never know. If I didn't tell you they were allergy-friendly, you'd never know. Um, but this is a London broil with Tex-Mex seasoning, Tex seasonings. I have a fabulous grilled green beans that you can do on the grill or on the stove. This gorgeous Yukon gold potato salad with sun-dried tomatoes. So this is something, and I always tell people, if you're not sure what's going to be at the party, offer to bring a dish. And you can bring one of these dishes, and then you know that you are free from your allergy, you know, your allergen. Um, and, and they're great. And these are also, the, all these recipes are at aviq.com. AUVI-Q.com. Thanks, Robin, for joining us to create awareness of life-threatening allergic reactions. Great. Thanks, Rose. Summer is a perfect time to assess your financial capability. Knowing only 43% of Floridians set aside money in case of an emergency. So if it's time to invest in a new car, consider an innovative and eco-friendly auto that's energy efficient and drive to St. Augustine to celebrate their 500th year anniversary. And make time, men, to enjoy a new experience. Enjoy the outdoors with allergen-free foods. And remember to wear your sunblock daily to prevent the chance of cancer. Share your plans for a clean break experience this summer at facebook.com forward slash Rose Lee Show. And happy and safe travels to all of you.